Hey guys, this is Shayna from yumiyarns.com. Welcome to my new channel. Um, I've been wanting to do a podcast for a while and it just hasn't quite worked out. And it's kind of rainy and drizzly out today. There's a window over there. That's why I look that way. Um, <laughs> and it just felt kind of like the right time to finally start it up. Um, so if you don't know me, um, like I said, I'm Shayna. I do uh, knitwear and crochet design and um, just generally hoard yarn. <laughs> um, I felt like it would be fun to do a podcast because I live in South Dakota and um, it's kind of hard to feel as connected to some of my friends from knitting events and things like that. Um, cause even though we have Instagram, there's, you can't do everything on Instagram. You can do a lot, but not everything. Uh, so I just wanted to do a YouTube channel kind of, um, to get a little bit more of a sense of community with the knitting world and, um, to kind of share some of my favorite stuff with you guys. I used to do knitting kits where uh, each month I would design a pattern and the pattern would be specifically for an indie dyer or a small yarn producer that I had met through some event or another. And um, the whole idea was, and then I would also partner with another small business um, that did stuff like little candies or um, little notions or soaps or things like that. Lots of handmade, locally sourced, small business type stuff. Um, and the whole idea with those was to be able to share some of the stuff from some of my local events further out into the world. Uh, because since I am in South Dakota, I am right next door to Minnesota, which it, I believe that they are still the most number of yarn stores per capita in the U.S., which is kind of crazy. Um, but there's a lot of really good yarn stores there, and they have a lot of really good events. Um, and it's only like a four-hour drive for me um, to get to some of the stuff. But there's a lot of people that go to some of my more local events that don't go to the ones in Minnesota or things like that, um, and vice versa. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm exposed to through some of my smaller, like really local to me stuff that my other friends from all over the country and all over the world may have never seen um, or heard about because, you know, a lot of the times the small batch fiber producers don't have time to put together a elaborate website and list all of their things and do all the online stuff as well as raising their sheep and, you know, doing all of that stuff. So the whole idea behind the kits that I was doing was to kind of give a broader audience to some of those small batch um, yarn producers. And then it kind of morphed a little bit into where I was going to a bunch of events and meeting a bunch of new dyers and new people and they were all still kind of local to me but it kind of helped to expand my view a little bit about really how small our world has gotten like i've got friends over in england that produce amazing yarns and we're like just as good of friends as some of my friends here in south dakota um and so it, it kind of, uh, the business kind of grew and evolved as I did it. Um, I think I did the kits for two years, I believe, every month we did a kit. Um, and it, I ended up having to take a break from them and um, not do the kits because on top of doing the kits, I've also got, uh, he's now six at the time, I believe he was like three and four year old that we're doing homeschool with. Um, I've also been working full time at a desk job during all of that too. Um, and it just, it got to be too much. And so um, thankfully my husband's really understanding <laughs> and uh, we kind of talked through things and he could tell that I was getting really stressed and, um, and I just wasn't able to put as much 
into developing the kits and the patterns and everything as I wanted. And so I decided that it would be better to take a break from them and just do the designs and um, connect with some of my favorite indie dyers and stuff that way and just work with them one-on-one -on -one and do more um, just online promotion and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of a background on who I am and some of the stuff that I've done. Um, sorry if I say I'm a lot. That's just something that I do. I know that I'm not supposed to, but that's just how I talk. Um, <laughs> there you go. So I wanted to kind of go through a few whips with you guys and some of my upcoming ideas for projects. Uh, and then I've also got a really, really great giveaway that my friend Angela from uh, Crafty Like a Monkey, and uh, that's her Etsy shop. Um, her and I are doing this really great giveaway on Instagram, and I would like to invite you guys all to join. It's really easy. It doesn't cost you anything, promise, and it's really fun. We basically, uh, we were supposed to do an event this weekend called Yarn Over, which is this really cool marketplace um, that has, they've got classes and events, and it's put on by the Minnesota Knitters Guild, and it's so much fun. It's very short amount of time. It's just a one-day event. It kind of branches the whole weekend, but technically Yarn Over is just one day. Uh, but it's so great. You meet so many wonderful people there. Everybody is excited and like super high on yarn fumes. And it's just, it's amazing. And I had to miss it last year because we had gotten a new puppy and the new puppy was a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> Um, which if you've had new puppies, you probably know it's basically like having another child, um, except for they bite and scratch a lot more than babies generally do. Um, <laughs> and so we decided that I would skip yarn over last year to stay home and help with the puppy, um, which was fine. I did really miss going to yarn over. I usually, uh, the past four or five years, I basically go to hang out at the marketplace at the Stephen B booth with all my friends that work at Stephen B. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, I kind of like, I just like getting people as excited about the same things that I'm excited about. So a lot of the times I'm basically just hanging out in the Stephen B booth being like, did you see this yard? Did you see this one? Look at these ones look so great together. And, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a helper or not, but it's a lot of fun. And I get to hang out with all my friends that work there. And uh, usually we do some sort of pattern promotion thing. Um, but yeah, so that was really sad that I had to miss that last year. And then this year, Angela and I um, were actually going to share our own booth. Um, and I didn't, wasn't going to bring any yarns or anything for um, a while there. I was selling at a few events uh, some of the leftovers from my kits, but those kits are all cleared out now, so I have, like, nothing but stash yarn. <laughs> um, and so we were going to set it up where I would have my patterns to sell, and Angela would have her bags and stitch markers, and then I was basically just going to tell people, oh, go to this booth and get yarn for whatever. Um, and... I don't know. I was really excited about it. It was going to be really fun. But with all the COVID-19 stuff going on, uh, the event was canceled for this year, which is a bummer. But I am really glad that the Knitters Guild decided not to try and push through and everything. Um, but that was supposed to be going on this weekend. So instead of the event, we've been doing stuff online, Angela, uh, Crafty Like a Monkey. And I have been doing stuff on Instagram, and um, we've both got different sales going this weekend. So if you need any, uh, all of my patterns are 50% off, and all of Angela's bags are 20% off of in-stock items. Um, and then we've got a really super, super good giveaway, and I'm really excited about it because it just it makes me really happy to be able to share some stuff with other people when there's so much ridiculousness going on in the world, it makes me really happy to be able to do something nice for other knitters um, and crafters. And, you know, it just, I don't know, it feels good to do something good for people. 
Um, so I'm going to go into more details about the giveaway towards the end of the podcast. Uh, but I just wanted to give you a little teaser about that right now. Um, okay, so I have my little cheat sheet here because I tend to ramble a little bit, if you hadn't noticed. Uh, and I get myself distracted, so I'm going to try and stay focused. But we'll see how well that goes. <laughs> uh, so let's start with some whips. So right now, um, I have about 80,000 whips in my craft room in my basement. And sometimes it makes me really stressed out, but then I just kind of go through and reorganize them and put them into different project bags. Don't actually really work on them, but you know, just reorganizing them and shuffling them around a bit makes me feel less like a crazy person who has cast on everything. Um, <laughs> and so I've got a whole bunch of those. My, uh, Craft room has, has been kind of a work in progress. Um, I might do some before and after pictures as I work on things. We'll see. I, I'll try and post some things to my Instagram stories. Um, you don't want to see it in my feed because it's an unfinished basement. Like all the yarn's protected and fine and good and we don't have bugs or anything like that. But, I mean, it's it's dark and not like happy prettiness. Um but it's, I've got some ideas for it, so hopefully that'll be good. So that's kind of one of the works in progress is my actual craft room. Um, my other ones that I've got, I'm kind of, I'm trying to really focus where rather than jumping around between all the things, I have a design going and then I have something that I'm not designing for when my brain needs a break. Because um, sometimes you hit a wall with designing stuff. I know a lot of designers are really, really good with math. I'm not one of them. Um, I'm really good at spreadsheets <laughs> and visualizing what needs to happen where. So with those two combined, that's kind of how I do my patterns. Um, and then thankfully I have a really good tech editor who after we do the test net, my tech editor goes through and catches other things. Um, and so that seems to catch a little bit of everything. Obviously, I try to make sure that I catch any errors before I give it to my testers. But there's always stuff and there's always like little clarification things. Um, we did a test net for a pair of socks uh, a couple months ago, the um, adventure anklets. And... It was really kind of fun because I had test netters from all over the world. And because uh, I opened up the test net shortly before Sock Madness started. So a lot of my testers were my friends from Sock Ma from, my, from the Sock Madness group. And, you know, so they're used to kind of crazy patterns. And this was kind of not a vanilla sock pattern. <laughs> um, oh, I should have brought my sample of it to show you guys. I'll try and put a photo in if I can figure out how to do that. This may be a kind of just straightforward video. If I can figure out the photo, I'll put it in. Um, but it was really kind of cool because my testers, most of the time we didn't have a whole lot of numbers problems, but there was different things where like just the way that I had said something, they just sit, asked for clarification on what that meant or like how that actually played into the pattern. Um, and so that was, that was kind of eye opening for me and kind of nice. And I absolutely love it when I get a broad range of testers like that, because that's how you catch things that, you know, it might be something that's normal for me for like how we speak where I'm at, but for somebody that English is a second language or something, you know, mm -hmm. It just, I don't know, it, it was just really fun and uh, made for a really fun test knit. They were also all just really good testers. So <laughs> so that was, it, it just was a fun test knit. Um, but I was showing you whips. Like I said, I get distracted. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I've got two whip bags and they both happen to be project bags from my friends over at Toad Hollow. Um, it's, uh, toadhollownj.com 
is their site. Otherwise, they're just Toad Hollow on uh, Instagram. And uh, they also have a shop on Etsy as well. Uh, they make the cutest project bags. And I love Angela's bags. I love my Toad Hollow bag because look at how the handles, look at how the handles are situated. It makes me so happy because I'm one that I like to walk while I'm knitting. So I loop it around my arm and I can pull my stuff out and I can go and I love it. Uh, the thing that I like, kind of going back to Angela's bags because I like hers too. Honestly, Toad Hollow and Crafty Like a Monkey are probably my two favorite bags, people. Um, Angela doesn't, on her little sock bags, they're not zippered. They're snaps. And I love the snaps. Oh, this is a very sad looking little project. Oh, <laughs> this is not a knitting project in here. <laughs> It is a cross-stitch project that I couldn't find a few months ago. Well, we found it. Um, anyways, because of the snaps, I can do the same thing where I just loop the handle around my wrist and go. And I can just feed the yarn through this smaller little bit here. And I've never had a problem with the yarn jumping out of the bag or anything like that. If you're doing color work, you can have one strand going out here, one strand coming out here. They don't get tangled. It's really nice. Um, but the one thing that I will say with the larger Toad Hollow bags that I really like also, um, they do interfacing on their bags, so they stand up better. And they're just, they're nice and sturdy. And seriously, look at how cute it makes me so happy. Like, it's not, this is one of their Valentine's Day bags. It's April. It's almost the end of April. This is like what I love for all the time. So, <laughs> um, yes. So, I've got my two Toad Hollow bags with my current projects. This is another one of their Valentine's bags. This is uh, their drawstring, which is really handy because let me flip it over here. Um, it's deceptively large. Like I've got it flipped over here so that it's more of a yarn bowl. That's a sweater project in there, and I'm three balls in. So I mean, I won't be able to do the entire sweater project in this bag. I will have to move it to this one um, before too long, but hopefully I'll have this project done and out of the bag by the time this one needs to move up to a bigger size. Um, we'll see how it works. I don't know. I've also got like 8,000 bags because apparently I hoard those also. Uh, <laughs> so my first whip is a sweater. Um, this is the Glenmore designed by Isolde. Um, and I love it. This is upside down. Um, I'm making it out of yarn that I've had for like all of eternity. Uh, it's a discontinued yarn from Knit Picks. Um, it is Knit Picks Reverie in potion colorway. Oh, that's backwards. Sorry, guys. I'll figure out how to swap that around at some point. Um, <laughs> but I know you can get their undyed base of Reverie, but they don't have any more um, dyed ones on their site. Uh, but so far I'm having so much fun with this. I'm not a sweater knitter. Like, I have, I think, four. Um, oh, that's cute. Um, I think I have four sweaters started and I have only ever finished one, I think. And that one I don't even have anymore. 
I designed and knit up a man's sweater in brioche and garter stitch for Knitter's Magazine uh, back in the day when they were still publishing. And <laughs> um, I knit the entire thing in about two weeks. I thought my hands were going to fall off. <laughs> Um, and it turned out so good. I was so happy with it. And it just, I'll, um, I'll try and remember to bring the copy of the magazine with a picture of it, or if I can, I'll put a picture in of it. Uh, but the sweater was called the Boyfriend Brioche. And because it was for a magazine, I had to give them the sample. So I don't even have the only sweater that I've actually finished. <laughs> um... <laughs> But it was a fun knit, and I kind of want to make another one at some point. It turned out really cute. Um, back to this one, though. This one I love. I don't know if I misread the pattern or what I did up here, but as you can see, I have a nice little triangle of stockinette in each corner, and I don't know what I did there. Looking at the pictures of the samples, they don't seem to have that, so I think it's just me not reading things correctly, um, which is one of the reasons that I designed my own, because I'm not great at following patterns. Uh, <laughs> but it is kind of a relief to do somebody else's pattern and just roll with it and have fun. And like with this one, because I haven't done a ton of sweaters, this one, I love you sold it for one. I've followed her, like, for as long as I've been knitting. And uh, her and Laura Chow have been, like, two of my absolute favorites from day one. Um, and so when she was doing a knit-along for this one, I was like, you know, I could handle doing a bulky weight, easy pattern sweater. Because it's just a knit and purl stitch pattern. It's nothing crazy. And there's, like, no shaping to it because it's just supposed to be cozy comfort sweater. Um, it's supposed to be slightly oversized. I'm making it not, like, hugely oversized, but enough that it will just kind of be comfy. And I think it'll fit the way that I'm wanting it to fit, the way that I like my sweaters to fit. Uh, there is a cropped option. I am not a cropped person. So... I'm actually thinking I'm probably going to make mine more of a tunic length. Um, maybe not quite tunic length. I haven't decided yet. We'll see when I get there. I have a lot of body to knit. This is, I just, um, <laughs> yesterday was supposed to be my day to knit up this ball into my sweater. And instead, I spent the day fixing an error that I had done in the patterning. Like way up here and it wasn't just like a small little oh nobody's going to notice this like I laid it out and asked my husband if he could see it and he was like oh that's not supposed to be there that's that's how you know he doesn't knit and he doesn't notice things I mean he does but he's colorblind and he doesn't particularly care about clothing so therefore he doesn't really notice a whole lot, which I mean, is fine, <laughs> but that's kind of my test, at least for if I can get away with an error in a project or if I need to drop down and fix it. And <laughs> it was pretty blindingly obvious that it was there. So, um, yeah, it was probably, let's see, a chunk right about like that big. Um, right through here, I had already knit all of this, and the chunk was way up here. So I had to drop down a lot and fix that. And basically spent all of my knitting time yesterday doing that before I got super frustrated. And by the time I fi fixed it and was done, I was like, I don't need to knit on this today. I have spent enough time with this one. <laughs> The, the pattern itself is really good. I just need to pay attention more. Um, and part of the problem, too, is the yarn that Isolde called for with the pattern is a chunkier yarn. And why would I follow the pattern and 
use a yarn similar to the recommended yarn um, when I have this in my stash from forever ago that I had intended to knit up on bigger needles into a different sweater pattern. So I figured I could just translate the idea into this one. It would look cool because I do really like the way that the texture shows up. But um, this yarn is baby alpaca and acrylic. It's 20% baby alpaca, or sorry, 80% baby alpaca, 20% acrylic. Um, and you see that lovely halo? There is a lot of halo with this yarn. I know if you can see that very well. The color's getting distorted. But this yarn is the worst to try and take out. Like, just awful. So trying to not only drop back like 20 rows, probably more than 20 rows. It was a lot of rows. It was a lot of stitches to take out. I almost just started over and cut my losses because I know I have extra yarn. <laughs> um, but I didn't. And I'm glad that I didn't. I'm really happy with how it's looking. And I'm really excited to get back to just like knitting on it and enjoying it because I've done all the complicated stuff with it so far, and now I'm just at the point where I just knit around in the body and pattern. So hopefully I don't mess that up again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that one, that is where that one is, and I'll kind of keep you posted on that one. Um, I'm trying to not let myself get sucked into just knitting on stuff that isn't my own design stuff because I have a bunch of um, collaborations that I'm working on with my designs. And so I need to kind of keep those moving, but I also need something that is just like, <sighs> I, don't have to do that. I don't have to try and troubleshoot why this stitch isn't matching up with this stitch. Um, and so, so that one, it will probably take me a little bit longer to knit through this one than it does for most people. I know there's been a lot of people that have already finished theirs, and it, the pattern's only been out for like two weeks. So, I mean, it is a very quick knit sweater. I'm just taking my time. <laughs> uh, so that is that one. And then next, I've got this guy, which this is my design. Oh cute. I am at a weird spot in it, apparently, and it's kind of a mess. Um, I was working, I'm going to quick, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to quick get to the end of this row so you can see better what the shape is. Uh, this is one of the reasons that I need a project that's kind of just easy, because this one I have knit and ripped out and knit and ripped out and knit and ripped out the same section about 15 times so far because I keep thinking that I want it to do one thing and then um, when I'm actually doing that thing it's not actually what I wanted it to do if that makes sense like it kind of works and it follows what it, should happen for what I'm doing, but then when you actually see it knit up in the fabric, it's like, mm, no, that's not how you should be. You should be something else. <laughs> um, so this is my Dragon Rider shawl. Uh, it's done with um, uh, yarn from the girl who crafted, and I love these colors. I'm so excited because when we, uh, I got together with them after Zombie Apocalypse last year and we picked out yarn colors and like went back and forth for forever trying to decide which color combo we were going to do and everything. And um, we knew we wanted to do the sparkle base because I love sparkle yarns uh, and they've got a great sparkle yarn. It's they do a great job of keeping the um, sparkle and not letting it fade out. 
and I just thought that this would be perfect for a dragony shawl. So I'm gonna stand up here and show you. Breaking my house. Um, <laughs> because it's super fun. So the idea was to do a shawl based on dragon's wings. Uh, you start here and you knit all the way out this way. Um, initially, I was thinking that this was going to be the whole thing and then I asked around with my uh, IG family and everybody thought that it would be better if I did an extra edging along it with the silver because the silver is really like there's none of it here. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do for defining the different sections, kind of like dragon's wings, but I wanted to be able to use a bit more of it. Um, so this is just waste yarn. All of these stitches, once you get to the end of the section, you just put them on waste yarn. And then uh, you pick up stitches with the silver and do a couple rows. And then you switch over and you do this section out. So here, out through here. And again, put it on waste yarn, get more silver, do another one. And then you kind of just keep doing that same section all the way across. And then, uh, and this is the section, because this is the section that I've been ripping out over and over and redoing, because I wasn't positive. This is the halfway mark, basically, this silver line. I wasn't positive if I wanted to leave this like it is. Ugh, sorry about all those tails. Like this, where it's got these sections that are kind of open and then just add a border along the edge here. Um, or if I wanted to try to basically connect it so that it ends up being more of a um, semicircular where, because essentially this and this equal a 90 degree angle. So then this would be a 45 degree angle so that would wrap around your shoulders so that the shawl would stay on better. Uh, because since I have a little kid, I'm constantly trying to find ways to keep knitting from falling off um, or from being stolen by somebody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm really happy with how this is going. And this is much easier than all the jazz I was trying to do with filling and connecting through here. So we're just going to leave it like this and do our edging through here next. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's kind of fun. It's all basically mitered sections. See, these are all still live on the needle. And yeah, I'm just oh, I'm so excited. It's such a fun knit. I am a huge fan of garter stitch stuff. And I have a couple friends who get garter stitch fatigue, as they call it, <laughs> um, and don't understand how I can just do all the garter stitch, but I just, I love it, especially when you've got colors like this that just pop together, and look at that. See, isn't that fun? Because the yellow, let me show you, um, the, from, these aren't connected because I had to rip out that section so many times. Let me sit back down. So that you're not just seeing the top half, or the bottom half of my head. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got very excited about the yarn. Uh, these are the two main colorways. So it's kind of getting blown out a little bit. This is much more of a like ready, fiery orange, more red than orange. Um, and this is called pink lemonade, which it's yellow with little hits of pink, but. There are parts of the pink that match with some of the lighter parts of this one. And I just, I love the way that they're knitting up together. And uh, then this is the silver. So you can see I haven't gone through much of the silver yet. Uh, and one of the other things that I'm excited about with this pattern 
is that it's a uh, way as you go. Um, well, kind of. Basically, you weigh out your yarns ahead of time and divvy up how much you need for each section. And I've got a really simple math formula for that. Um, so you can use fingering, which I'll have the instructions row by row for fingering since that's what the sample is done out of. Um, but if you don't like using fingering or you have a ton of hand spun that you don't know what to do with or, you know, whatever size you feel comfortable using, you'll be able to because I'll have a little, basically a little worksheet for you so that you can figure out, okay, this is how many rows I need to do for that first section. And then basically the rest of the shawl builds off of that first section. So you don't have to weigh any more yarn. You just weigh, measure out for that first one, and you're done. You can put the scale away and just enjoy your knitting. Um, so, well, until you get to the edging, on mine it'll be the silver edging, um, then you'll have to do a little bit more weighing and measuring. But again, I'll have a little worksheet in there for you so that it's nice and easy. And again, I'm not great at math, so I figure any help I can give you guys will probably be appreciated. <laughs> Um, yeah, so those are my current works in progress. I'll keep you updated. Um, hopefully I'll be starting the test knit for the Dragon Rider shawl, uh, this week. And, um, if you do want to try testing it out, send me a message. Uh, I have a few test knitters that I work with regularly, but like I said, I like having a broad range. So, I like having like brand new knitters too. Um, and I know that sometimes it can be like really stressful for testers sometimes. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's fine and whatever, but I have had a couple testers who get kind of really just stressed out because they think that they have to be like perfect knitters for testing. And that's not necessarily true. Like for me at least, I, Yes, I want to make sure my numbers are good and everything. I also, like, more so for me, I feel like the testing point is just for clarification. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I figure my tech editor is there for grammar and making sure all the numbers mesh up the way they're supposed to. Um, and my testers are, like, my real life people knitting through it. And if they can't figure out what I'm saying, that's where the problems are. <laughs> uh, so I would much rather have just a broad range of experience and everything with my test knitters if I can. Um, but yeah, so those are my whips. And then I wanted to show you uh, this. I haven't posted anything on Instagram yet because Things have been kind of crazy. Imagine that with all the COVID stuff. Sorry, I'm rearranging a little. So I messed it up as I was moving around. Um, I'm still working at my job because it's deemed... Um, my brain is gone. Basically, we're not closing. I work in a magazine. And it, since it's under the media umbrella, we're deemed essential. That's the word. Uh, so I still have my regular hours and everything. Um, my husband works at a retail store and they have closed. So we had a while there of, I'm sure like most of you, where we were kind of like, I don't know how this is going to work. You know, we weren't quite sure what all was going to happen. Um, but things are good. Everything's kind of worked out for the best. We're in a good situation with everything. Uh, I just, for like about a month there, was kind of scattered and didn't do a whole lot of sharing of things. So I haven't shared this yet. And I'm super excited about it. This one um, is a design that my other friend, my friend Shana, who, uh, Shana Lines, who lives out in Colorado, this is her design. It's her rapazoid. And uh, I met Shayna at Zombie Knit Apocalypse, which is our fun little thing that we, it's a fun knitting event that we go to in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, 
And we, uh, a lot of stuff is held before Zombie and Apocalypse. A lot of things were held through their Ravelry group. And we were doing a uh, knit along. A bunch of us were knitting up Shana's Rapazoid. And this one is mine. I super love it. It's super cute and fun. It's, again, like just miles of garter stitch. Oops, sorry, guys. Miles and miles of garter stitch. And hers is written, uh, her regular pattern is written as if you were holding two fingering weights together. One of our friends um, <clears throat> did hers in linen because um, she lives in California and uh, she was wanting more of a summery version and oh, oh, sorry guys uh, hers turned out so great and I just I love the idea of doing the linens because um, I have a problem with buying red lace weight for whatever reason like I never buy lace weight ever because I never knit with it. But every once in a while, I get this great idea that I need whatever beautiful red lace weight I have stumbled across. And I buy it thinking, I never buy lace weight. There's no way I could be doubling up. Nope. I have probably eight different types of red lace weight in the exact same shade of red. All exactly the same. I don't know what's wrong with me. But this was a really great way of burning through a lot of it because <laughs> um, I went through so much yardage. Uh, I also had a friend um, a couple of years ago now who was de-stashing some of her yarn, and she had a bunch of linen, and it was really pretty hand-dyed linen. Um, it was white with, like, blues and pinks, and it was just kind of pastel -y and pretty. And, um, nobody else was wanting the linen in our knitting group. And so I basically just took all of her linen because <laughs> I like linen, <laughs> even if I don't knit with it a ton at that, you know, finer gauge, I like doubling it up with things. And I, I just love the drape of it. And so I was more than happy to take the linen off her hands. Um, but so then when we were trying to decide on colors for our rapazoids and everything, I decided that I was going to do a bunch of my lace weight stuff held together and then just mix and match colors as I felt like it so that um, I had a much more marled effect, kind of like uh, Shana's original where she held two strands of fingering weight together. Um, but with this one, I was able in parts to hold three strands together and it's still a very lightweight um, vest that I can wear over a bunch of things. <coughs> uh, sorry, um, it's just kind of dry in here. Uh, and so that's kind of how the, stand up again, I'll show you, how like the stripes that I did uh, through the whole body, I had this light blue hand dyed lace weight that I actually got, I think it was my very first knitting club I ever signed up for. Um, a friend of mine, Rita, who was doing uh, Castle Fibers out of Rapid City, had done a Jane Austen knitting club. And um, I don't know if you can see that. And uh, I got the uh, lace weight in a kit and never knit it up because at that point I was so new, the lace weight kind of terrified me. Um, <laughs> but what I ended up doing... Oops don't want to dip that in my tea, um, was I held two strands of that whitish linen that I had told you about, I held two strands of that with one strand of the blue lace weight for most of this, for all the parts where it's blue, that's what I did. And then for the stripes, <coughs> I held... Again, let's see. Yeah, for the entire body of it, I held two strands of that whitish linen with the pinks and blues hand painted on it. Um, for the blue stripes, I just held one strand of blue with the two strands of linen. For 
these stripes, it's harder to see on the camera, but I actually, through this whole chunk, I have a metallic gold strand that I held with the linen. And then for these thinner bits here, I just held one strand of this same red with it. And so I've got, here, let me unhook myself here. Um, I'm very fancy. I don't have a actual shawl pin, so I'm keeping my vest closed with bobby pins. <laughs> um, so you can see it's really drapey. You can wear it like that. Um, but essentially, you knit, oops, that's backwards, because you start on the short side. So you start on this side, you knit across, make your armhole, you knit the back, make your armhole, knit the side, and then you pick up this side, and we'll pick up along here, and knit up, and for that section, what I did, I was starting to run out of linen, so I did a single strand of linen and two strands of red for the collar. And then you go around the edge and do an I-cord edging. And it's harder to see with this, but um, I didn't have enough linen at that point to do linen with the red, so I just did the gold with the red for the whole edging. And <clears throat> then I can't remember if you do this before or after the final edging, but this is my eye cord around the armhole. And with that one, I just did, I think, two strands of the blue. Uh, but yeah, I just, I love it. It makes me super happy. You can kind of see it a little better. <laughs> um, things we do to show off our knitting, right? Uh, yeah, it just, it's really comfortable. I love the drape that the linen gives it. It's not too hot, so I'll still be able to wear it this summer. I've actually got, um, this, well, I've got this gray dress, which was a hand-me-down for my little sister. Um, and I love it, but I wear it, like, all the time, and I've actually got, uh, little denim sundress that I just need to get fixed. Um, and because I got it for like, I think it ended up being like $10 because the zipper was broken and it was originally like a $70 dress. So that was really exciting. Um, but I don't sew. So, so <laughs> uh, I have to go and get that fixed. Um, but as soon as that's done, it's like the cutest little fit and flare dress. And I think it would look really, really great with this. Um, but again, that's the Rapazoid by Shana Lines. Uh, and it's S-H-A-N-A -A underscore L-I-N-E-S designs, I think. If you look up Shana Lines on Instagram, you'll find her. Otherwise, um, just type Rapazoid. And for Ravelry, and you'll find it. Um, there's been a bunch of different projects knit up from other people in the Zombie Knit Apocalypse group. So you can see a bunch of different colorways and fiber options. And I don't know, it was, it was just a really fun, mindless project. Again, just like knitting all the garter and just playing with colors. It was just really fun. Oh, and she puts a coloring sheet in her pattern, which is kind of cool. I ended up not using mine because I kind of knew how I wanted to start striping things once I started going with it. Um, and I think part of it is because I do my own designs, I kind of just looked at hers and was like, okay, so I'm going to knit this many inches in this color, this many in this color, this, and that's just kind of how my brain works. Um, but I know a lot of our other friends who have been knitting it up, um, <coughs> They did use the coloring sheet to kind of plan out, like, okay, this is where this one's going. 
this is where this one, and there's um, been a bunch of ones done out of just sock yarn scraps, and uh, Shana actually has a really, really cute one. Uh, it's, I think it's one of the samples that she did with the pattern itself out of a whole just mess of Leading Man Fiber Arts uh, scraps, and it's super, super cute. Uh, so go give it a look. It's, I don't know, it's really fun. She also has a little uh, style guide PDF that comes with it to give you ideas on how to wear it, because um, you can actually flip it over so that it's upside down. Um, and, well, upside down, depending on how you want to define what side is up and what side is down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just, it's really a fun pattern. Um, highly recommend that one. So, uh, next I kind of wanted to go over what my next project plans are. Um, <clears throat> and this is like as soon as my Dragon Rider sample is done and testing has started and is, you know, going along decently. I try to not start any of my own new designs until like the first week of testing has passed just because... That first week, there is a lot of questions and a lot of stuff going on, <laughs> and I just don't have the brain space for wrangling test knit and starting brand new design idea at the same time. <laughs> uh, but as soon as it is done, look at this. I am so excited. This is Bulky Gorgeousness from my friend Sam at Lavender Loon. And the colors on my computer are distorting this just a little bit, but it's, look, it's like this beautiful blush pink, but then there's also little pops of like this little bright purple in there. This yellow is actually kind of a neon, like it looks like somebody just took a highlighter and scribbled over part of the yarn. And oh my goodness. Oh, it is so squishy. <laughs> so poor Sam has been so patient with me. Um, I got this from her at ZK last year. Uh, ZK is Zombie Knit Apocalypse, so last June. And like I mentioned before, we had a puppy last year. Um, we did end up having to rehome him right around Christmas because... The square footage in our house is really pretty much the same as, like, a two-bedroom apartment. And we have no fenced-in backyard. And, like I said, both me and my husband work. And we got a super high-energy dog, which we knew going in that he was really high-energy. And we were prepared for that. We thought that he was going to be more similar in size to my sister's dog who we found out is a mini version. And by the time we rehomed Axel, um, he was almost 70 pounds. And like my mom tried to help with walks and stuff. And both my sister and my mom had to hold on to the leash because this dog was so incredibly strong. <laughs> uh, he listened to me really well, but I was pretty much the only one that he listened to. Um, so that took a big chunk of my design time last year. Uh, and I just kind of, it, it was a lot last year going on. Uh, and I was really incredibly sad to get rid of Axel because he was just like my goofy little psychotic buddy. Like <laughs> he was just so excited to see you and he just, oh, he was so fun and cute and just such a little crazy goofball. And he was so smart. Like, he was the easiest dog to train for different things. But that being said, because he was smart, he also, if you were not on your game and, like, watching him to catch him, he would try to sneak and do things he knew he wasn't supposed to do. Um... So it was, it was a lot of work, and it got to the point where, like, it, it just wasn't fair to keep him. Um, because 
I would take him on walks before I went to work. I would come home and walk him at lunch. I would come home after work and take him on a walk. And we would play fetch either down the hill in my backyard for like an hour or two or up and down the stairs if it was too cold or rainy or whatever outside for forever. And he's still like just never ran out of energy, which is fine. However, my kid's room is right next to the top of the stairs. And there was a lot of times where we had really close calls that Axel was just so excited that my kid was coming out of his room that Cairo almost got knocked down the stairs. And it got to the point where Cairo, uh, that's my son, he would go to play with Axel and Axel would just be so crazy full of energy that um, Cairo would be like, okay, well, that's enough. And then he would just go shut himself in his room. Which, you know, I, it wasn't fair to either of them because then if Axel was out of his kennel, Cairo basically just was in his room. And if Cairo was out with the rest of us, Axel had to be kind of over in his corner because he kind of just scared Cairo because he was just so excited about everything. Um, and it just it just wasn't fair to anybody really with the situation. Um, but he did get a really good home somewhere with a fence, so he could be outside running until he wore himself out. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so that's that's what happened with Axel. But, like I said, all of that kind of played into me not having nearly as much design time as I wanted. So poor Sam, we had talked about doing this, like I said, last June. And finally finally getting to do my idea. I have it all planned out. Everything's ready to go. Just need to cast on and start my sample. Oh, it's so squishy, you guys. I can't even tell you. Um, if you're curious, the colorway is Interstate Love, and it just, it makes me so happy. And again, that's Sam at Lavender Loon. What? I don't know if that'll reverse or how that works. We'll figure it out. But two skeins of that. It's going to become something beautiful. I'm really excited about the technique. Um, I do a lot of um, tutorial, like photo tutorials for different techniques and things to go along with my patterns. And would you guys be curious or interested in me doing some video tutorials as well? Um, if you are, leave me a comment down below letting me know. Um, because I think I can get things set up well enough where I could do some video tutorials now. Uh, I had tried doing them a while back and didn't have a good setup. It was really janky. The lighting was terrible. And it took me forever to do anything with the videos. And then I only had like two views on them. So it just it didn't seem worth it at the time. But if you guys are interested, I'm more than happy to try them again and um, do them along with the photo tutorials. That way, because I know people learn different ways, and so um, my whole goal is to make it easy and approachable for anybody that wants to try knitting my stuff, um, and then also share some of my absolute favorite dyers and bag makers and all of that stuff. Uh, so, like I said, let me know in the comments below what you think. And now that it's been almost an hour, can't believe it took that long. Sorry, guys. Um, I wanted to tell you about our giveaway. So, Angela is super, super nice and amazing and has offered your choice of bags from her shop. And it's Crafty Like a Monkey at Etsy. So this is her larger bag. Sorry, the light's kind of... This is her smaller bag. I don't know if she has these sizes available right now, or not these sizes, these styles available right now. Um, but she basically is like, if it's in the shop, it's part of the contest. So pick your size, pick whatever fabric. Um, I've got a couple of her bags. She does, I love her bags because she does super cute nerd bags. And if you know me, I'm very nerd like 
These are all my bags that I've gotten from her. Three of them are Harry Potter. One is Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> she's also got a few non-nerd ones, but those are my favorite. Um, because she just does such cute ones, and she finds great fabric. Uh, so, for the giveaway, like I said, Angela's letting the winner pick any one bag from her Etsy shop. And then I am offering up... Four skeins. Sorry, they're kind of fuzzed out. Four skeins of Knit Picks Diadem from my personal stash. It's alpaca and silk, and it's single plied, and it's like just buttery soft. It is so gorgeous. And it's harder to tell the colors on my computer. I have a photo on Instagram that shows the colors better, and that's where most of the entries are going to be at. But this one's kind of a dark green. This is kind of a tealy blue. This is kind of a lighter royal blue, and then this is like a turquoisey blue. But it's a nice pretty fade. Um, and that yarn is not available from Knit Picks anymore. Um, I may have gone slightly crazy with it when it was available, and I may have a little bit in my stash. <laughs> so it makes me really happy to get to share it with people because it is super beautiful, and I think this will make a really, really gorgeous project. Um, and then, so the winner will get those four skeins of yarn, any project bag from Crafty Like a Monkey, um, your pick, whatever's in stock, yarn, and then um, one of any of my patterns, Yumi Yarns on Ravelry, um, or you can look at uh, yumiyarns.com. Uh, in the shop section of yumiyarns.com, I'm still in the process of uploading all my patterns. I've got almost 60 patterns on Ravelry, and my pattern shop on my site is a little bit newer. And it takes a little while to get everything uploaded. <laughs> so I'm slowly working on getting those added into my store on um, my website. And the only reason that I don't just go strictly through Ravelry is because I know um, there are some people that don't use Ravelry at all and don't care to. Uh, so even though they can still buy patterns without making a Ravelry account, it's just not something that they're interested in doing. Um, and so that's why I've got them available on my site also. Um, but yeah, so it should be a fun giveaway. I'm really excited uh, to enter the giveaway. I've got, like I said, there's a post on Instagram. Um, and you'll be able to tell which post it is. It's I just put it up, uh, not last night, but the night before, because the giveaway only runs through tomorrow, Sunday, April 26th, midnight central time. Um, that's when it'll close and be done. Um, you have to go to the Instagram post, comment, follow me and Angela. Um, if you tag other people in the post, you can have as many extra entries as you want. Um, we're really, it's kind of a loosey-goosey thing. <laughs> um, I don't really care how many entries each person has. If you want to tag your friends in it, that's awesome. Um, uh, we're just kind of trying to make it fun and easy and nice. Um, I tried to go in and edit the post because I didn't realize it till somebody had pointed it out to me later. Uh, unfortunately, because of shipping costs and everything, we are only able to do this giveaway for continental U.S. Um, participants. I'm really sorry about that. I wish that it wasn't as expensive for me to mail it overseas or anything like that. Um, but unfortunately, because I've done the kits, I know how much some of the shipping costs are, and uh, unfortunately at this time, with everything that's going on, I can't afford to, to do that. Um, but maybe we'll be able to come up with something that will be like a worldwide 
thing, like just a pattern giveaway or something like that. Um, maybe that's what we'll do. I have a shawl pattern coming out next week that's a mosaic shawl pattern that takes two skeins of fingering weight. So maybe we'll do that where we'll do some sort of giveaway and the winner can get one of those patterns emailed to them. Um, I don't know. We'll play around with it. Keep an eye out for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that is about what I have for you guys today. Uh, if you've stayed the whole time to watch, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't have a super structured plan for when videos will be released at this point. Um, just because this is something that's super new. I'm hoping that it will be like an every other week thing. I don't know if I can manage every week right now. Um, but I'm hoping that I can at least do every other week so that I can kind of keep you up to date on what I'm knitting. And um, I'd like to see what you guys are making too. So um, if you have a YouTube podcast post it in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. Um, if you're on Instagram, find me over there. I'm Yumi Yarns everywhere. It's Y-U-M-I-Y-A-R-N-S. Um, and I, like I said, I just kind of want to feel like I get to be more of a part of the community. Um, cause we do have a really good knitting group around here, but with my schedule and everything, I very rarely got to meet with them before the lockdown stuff happened. And now with the lockdown stuff, that's not happening right now. Um, so, yeah, definitely find me Instagram. Um, I am on Facebook. I don't like Facebook. Uh, so I'm on there very rarely, like maybe once a week or so. I have a page on there if you don't use Instagram and you want to see the posts and stuff. Um, you're welcome to follow the Facebook page instead. Um, and I have a Ravelry group also. There's not a whole lot of action happening in there, um, but I try to keep it updated with the new patterns that come out and um, news and stuff like that. So um, if you're interested there, there's that option. Um, basically, I try to kind of keep my stuff accessible no matter what platform you prefer. Um, so find me on your favorite platform. <laughs> Let's be friends. Let me see what you're making. And yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it and want to hang out more, um, just like and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Happy knitting. <laughs>